All right, there might be water on the moon. There's always been uh, suspicions that uh, it, it exists, now, not in the traditional way we think of water, like lakes or large ponds or anything like that, but in uh, particles, molecules, really. Uh, you know, we have used to think on the far side of the moon and in dark polar packets, uh, but this is on the brightest side of the moon and staring us in the face. Astronaut Tom Jones on the significance of this. I was thinking of you, Tom, with this discovery here because We've also heard about, you know, maybe a water presence in the, in the atmosphere of Venus and um, the possibility, you know, in, in beds on the surface of Mars. What's going on with all these water revelations? Well, water is the, the, it's the gold of space exploration. So if we can find water anywhere, whether it's on Mars or the asteroids or on the moon nearby, that really means it opens the way for human explorers and eventual a permanent human presence there because it's drinking water. You can break it into oxygen and hydrogen and make rocket fuel. You can breathe the oxygen that you generate from water. So where you find water, it makes our task of exploration a lot easier. How do we get at it and how do we use it? I mean, we return to the moon, which I guess we are. How would that be helpful for us? How do we take advantage of that? So if you are going to the south or north pole of the moon, as NASA currently plans, the south pole, uh, there we think there are sheets or deposits of ice underneath the soil in these dark craters that never see sunlight. And it's been locked up there for billions of years. But the new discovery says that even on the sunny face of the moon, there's probably water locked up in little shadowed, dark, cold spots that might be as small as a centimeter up to a kilometer in size. So you might find these cold traps where... 10 or 20 percent of the whole inventory of water on the moon is in these sunny areas. And so it might be a lot easier to get to. The current discovery says that in one cubic meter of lunar soil, there might be as much as a 12-ounce bottle of water equivalent there. And that's a, a really valuable resource we can tap into. You don't have to live only at the South Pole. All right. How do you tap into something that's just like a soda bottle? Well, so the, the water molecules are just like the ones we drink out of our tap. And so all you have to do is get that water liberated, usually by baking the soil with solar energy or melting the ice in the case of the, the shadowed craters. So you only have to bring it up a few uh, tens or hundreds of degrees. Uh, the water molecules evaporate. You trap them in a cold trap or a distillation unit, okay. and now you've got water. And you tank it, and you uh, chill it down, and then you can make it into oxygen and hydrogen. Okay, so it would obviously change our thinking about what we do when we get to the moon and how we start tapping this. And then what are its implications for using the moon as a sort of a launching pad for, for discoveries elsewhere? Well, I think because we have this valuable resource uh, at our fingertips, literally at the uh, southern and uh, northern polar regions of the moon, and now we can search for it in more um, sunny places uh, that might be scientifically more interesting. It means that anywhere we can go, we can probably set up a water extraction plant. You might have to turn over a lot more soil to get at it in the temperate regions of the moon, but it really unlocks the potential of not having to bring all of this water, rocket fuel, et cetera, from Earth Instead, you can uh, make what you need there on the moon. And that cuts the cost directly in half. You don't have to haul your return fuel uh, up from Earth. It's really an important attribute of a long-term plan to exist on the moon, the asteroids, or Mars. You know, there's always been the view where there's water, there's life. Um, you know, obviously, that might be a stretch on the moon, but maybe on Mars, maybe on, on Venus. I mean, um, or are we taking leaps we shouldn't here? Uh, I think life uh, more likely on a place like Mars where we've got uh, a plentiful water in the form of ice just below the surface. And I, you can't rule out the satellites of Jupiter and Saturn where there are, there are salty oceans beneath the icy crust where there's warm water, organic material, and an energy source from the, the internal heat of those satellites. So those are the big, the big promising potential areas for life, maybe in the atmosphere of Venus, although I'm a little bit skeptical of that. On the moon, not so much, but the moon is a place where we learn how to operate on the surfaces of other worlds. And then we extend that knowledge and experience, plus the technology of creating rocket fuel from water to those other bodies that we would visit. So the notion that we're drilling in the lunar surface and up pop beings or creatures of some sort, that is not likely just, just for now. It's just what we can do with the water that we find, right? Uh, that's right. You use the water as your resource for subsisting on the moon to generate rocket fuel to fuel up rocket ships that can go out beyond the Earth-Moon system. All right. That's how cool you are, Don, as an American hero. You just glossed over the stupidity of that final question, which only a hero could do. Tom Jones, thank you very, very much. Astronaut extraordinaire.